We're at Jekyll and Hyde, which is kind of a scary restaurant pub in New York City. And right now, perfect for the Halloween edition, we've got Glenn Danzig back on the Headbangers Ball. It's been a year since, uh, since we talked on camera where you got to abuse me and do all that other kind of fun stuff. Well, that's a lot of fun. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> Someone's got to do it. I'm the, the brunt of everybody's good jokes. Anyways, since uh, last Halloween, you released Thrall, yeah. which is a live Danzig record. Well, it's half live, half studio. Right. And Mother 93, if you were watching Headbangers Ball two weeks ago, it was on Countdown to the Ball. And uh, it's nice that a song that's, what, six years, four years old? Six. Six years old is now entering on Countdown to the Ball. Well, but tell I guess, me a little uh, bit. everybody's catching up finally. Now tell me a little bit about the record. Uh, what do you want to know? Thrall. Thrall. Uh, recorded live. We um, recorded um, a bunch of our live shows, but the stuff that we took off of, uh, that we used for Thrall is from a show we did last year at uh, Irvine Meadows in California. You know the place. Mm -hmm. It's about 14,000 people. And, uh, and j just so people know, that's a place that lately concerts, I mean, a lot of big bands, we're not going to mention names, yeah. but a lot of big bands have came around to Irvine Meadows and, and they not stiffed. been able to sell it out. That's right. And every time you've played there, I mean, it's the one show I know in, in Southern California that it's like always sells out. Yeah, that was sold. I was oversold. And you played there Halloween last year. And just so you also know, it is the only year that Oingo Boingo didn't play their Halloween. Yeah, they have a hold on that every year for, I guess, 10 years or so. They've played their Halloween. We got to do it last Halloween. And it worked out really well. And we had Zombie on the show. Right. And Caius. And that was a great show. And even ended up filming the video that we're about to play right well, now. Well, yeah, that's filmed uh, some stuff in Europe, too. Germany and uh, I think London, Scotland, which is great, Glasgow, and then um, Irvine Meadows. And yeah, it came out really Anything, nice. And, and, and you see like a lot of the security guards on the stage and trying to like put you know a little method is? to the madness, but it didn't work. I mean, no, tell well, me some of the stuff that the happened. The security guards were on stage because the barricade broke and they had nowhere to go. We're the first band ever whose fans have broken the barricade at Irvine Meadows. And it's not a rinky-dink no. barricade, it's a a big heavy barricade so guys thank you and they were uh, tearing up the seats lighting bonfires and there were two bonfires up on the lawn because it was oversold so it was people up on the lawn and there was two big bonfires up on the lawn and people were dancing around them it looked like a big pagan ritual it was very cool it's kind of halloween thing yeah here is the video this is mother 93 which is uh the live danzig record but it's got a couple uh studio it's songs half live, on it. half studio what we did was um we were going to put the four live songs on, and then we didn't want it to just be, you know, four songs for the price of an EP. So we went in the studio just one day and very quickly just kicked out those other three songs. And one yeah, of them. How you doing? And um, then uh, we gave, you know, everybody three extra songs. And one of the ones was uh, It's Coming Down, which is a great song. And the video, I was one of the rare people. I don't oh, know you if, were it, one I don't of know if it was lucky. Ones, yeah. I don't know if it was lucky that I got to see this video. I explained it as best as I could on Headbangers Ball. It's the only video that MTV didn't play that it, I, w I really wasn't even able to fully explain the video. There were a lot of, how can we say it, piercings? Piercings, guy takes a nail and bangs it through right his through a head. Uh, Guys, genitalia. imagine where you wouldn't want a nail. They show a nail being driven through, and it wasn't special effects. A guy really did it. They're yeah, into true. that. There's people, there's people, maybe even like you, that are into that kind of stuff. And, I don't think we need so to say it. you're not into that stuff. I don't think we need to say it, but kids, don't try that at home, okay? But it was a pretty... Oh, is this Beavis and Butthead now? Well, we're just, well, I don't know. Maybe if somebody happened to see that video, they go, you know what? I got a hammer and a nail. I don't I got think some free time. a lot of people are going to be doing that. Maybe you would, Ricky. I mean, no, that, that, ain't, that ain't my thing. No, what is but your thing? Me, we don't want to talk about <laughs> that on TV either. Now, other than that video, there was something that I went out in the stores and saw and bought out of curiosity and was pretty surprised was there was a record that was out about six or seven months ago called Glenn Danzig that was not what people expected. The Black expect. Aria? Right. Why don't you tell me about that? Uh, it's just some stuff I had bouncing around, some theme songs we come out to, and then I wrote a six-piece movement about uh, Milton's Paradise Lost. And it's all kind of just classical But it, it's soundtrack. classical music, right? It's basically classical stuff. Yeah. Very moody classical yeah. music. Now, you you tell me something that it w like entered on the Billboard classical chart. I guess it, it started in at number two or three and went to number one Billboard's classical chart, which I guess doesn't mean that much because you know how many classical records sell, but it's still kind of nice. But do you think you that know? there were classical fans that maybe were buying it that had no idea who Glenn Danzig was? No, well, what, a lot what of happens Danzig was um, it was starting to get played on classical stations, so 
you know, and a lot of the fans bring it to the show to get signed. They really like it. Uh, I didn't expect to sell any. We didn't do any promotion for it. I figured, you know, it would just be the people who asked at the end of the shows, where can I get that music or this music? I figured we'd sell about 2,000 of them. And I put a disclaimer on the back, yeah, you know, and said, this isn't, you know, a Danzig album. It's different and, you know. And people actually like it, you know. I'm not saying all of our fans, but the people who bought it really like it. Uh -huh. And uh, it's kind of nice when people come up after the show and, you know, they want you to sign it and they tell you how much they really like it. They listen to it before they go to sleep or when they want to relax or sometimes when they want to get psyched to go out. Or It's, it's cool. Yeah, you might yeah. want to check it out as something that's definitely different. Yeah. It's called Black Aria? Black Aria. Black Aria. Okay, we'll be back with more Glenn Danzig as the Headbangers Ball continues. That out that I thought was really cool was I know you, you wrote something for Roy Orbison in the past, right? Mm -hmm. And now I heard that you wrote something for Johnny Cash. Yeah, I wrote a song uh, for his new album. The original Man in Black. That's right. I was just going to say that. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. It's okay. <laughs> but tell me, I mean, what is it like? You got to meet Johnny Cash and stuff yeah, like that? Yeah, I got that? to uh, meet him and teach him the song, and he really liked it. So that was kind of cool because, you know, certain Johnny Cash songs, you know, I remember from a long time ago. My before dad he, liked before he got all religious, he kind of had like an evil dark side. Johnny Cash? I still think he's pretty bad. He's, uh -huh. he's a pretty cool guy. Uh, and his voice is great, and I got to teach him the song, and it, you know, it worked out really well. That's got to be, I mean, to work with, as, as I would think, like, you know, I'm a big fan of a lot of the old rockabilly classics and stuff like that, and you get to work with Johnny Cash or Roy Orbison. Are there any other people that you'd like really like to work with? Um, I don't know. I'm sure if I thought about it, you know, because I like a lot of music, so right. if I think about it, yeah, there's probably... A Even do Trouble, which uh, Elvis did, which is on the We'll get Elvis back well. from the grave. There you go. Tonight on Halloween, and we'll, <laughs> we'll be in trouble. And he'll be doing Danzig songs. Yeah. We'll be back with more Headbangers Ball, but right now, here's a scary video. Here's Ozzy Bark at the Moon. Halloween from Halloween. Get it? It's this Halloween theme that we've got. The very scary edition of the Headbangers Ball. Here with Glenn Danzig. And, you know, Thraw came out, which... Now, are you going to be working on any new stuff, or when it, are you going to new In December, we start a new album. And any titles or any ideas that he's working on that? I'd, I'd just as soon not even put a title on it, uh -huh, until I feel. Just put it out? Yeah. Now, I have a question, because Beavis and Butthead watch are obviously it, big it. Danzig fans, and you see Beavis and Butthead going off on Danzig. Do you think, because we, we talked to White Zombie about this before, and it looks like that they're helping breaking a lot of bands, you know? It could be. Um, well, or maybe you think it's just that it's getting the video finally played on prime time. It's kind of funny that Beavis and Butthead will play our stuff, but MTV, it's like stuff MTV would never play before. Well, it's getting played now. Time. Well, now well, it's maybe getting Maybe now that... Um, that's kind of cool, though. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people are complaining about Beavis and Butthead. I know kids like that. I grew up with kids like that. And I see kids like that come to our shows all the time. In some instances, I was even like that. <laughs> I was telling Glenn, I went yeah. to one of the shows in Arizona, and um, a guy came up to me at the show and goes, hey man, you know Glenn? He goes, does he bring his wolves on tour with him? So, it, you know. Yeah. And well, I, you what know, was the answer to that, anyway? Yeah, yeah so they're the in the back. back of the bus. Come on back. Um, now, also, you mentioned something off camera that you're going to be putting out a box set of Sam Hain. I think we're going to do a box set. Me and Erie talked about it, and... Um, we, I, I called up the old drummers uh, to see if they have some old photos laying around, and they're like, yeah, yeah. So I talked to Steve and London, and so maybe we'll put out a, a Sam Hain box set. Now, also, since the Misfits and Sam Hain were all on Plan 9, which was your record Watch label. It. Watch which it. Was your re which, which was your record label. And You're treading on thin ice, one word, so I don't bring it up as a, anymore. As a hot I learned that lesson right in Germany. I learned that lesson in Germany, bringing out that <laughs> <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. Should I, should I burn them? We'll ask the question, then you can okay. throw me in the fire. Okay. The question is, Plan 9 is your label. Yeah. And you're going to maybe bringing in new bands on your label and starting your own... Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to call it Plan 9 anymore. I might call it Evil Live and then just start a whole new thing. So if there's new bands out there, what's the kind of stuff that you're into right now? Uh, anything real. <laughs> if, if, you're you going to have to look hard then. I don't want imitation Pearl Jam albums, you mm -hmm. know. You know, and we all know who that is. Mm -hmm. You're not allowed to say that, huh? Yeah. So, what a video are we going to be playing next? Huh? See, I'm allowed to say whatever I want. I yeah, but... say whatever I want. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I want original bands. Mm -hmm. And bands that are doing it real loud. Now, what do you plan on doing? What is your Halloween when you're not playing? What do you do for Halloween? That depends what the Friend options children. are. 
it's actually pretty funny. Kids are scared to come to my house on Halloween. <laughs> 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 I buy candy and they won't come in the gate. They just mm -hmm. stand outside and then they go, uh-uh. So it's pretty funny. Okay, well, we're going to be back with more Halloween edition of the Headbangers Ball. Now, what are some of the stuff that you do since we're on the subject of Halloween, like in past Halloweens? As a kid, did you dress up on Halloween? Oh, yeah, we dress up three or four times a day. Sometimes more. Uh huh. Just from, you know, sometimes you just throw a sock over your head and go out and get more candy. You remember the costume I was two years ago? Isn't this two it? Two years ago. No, it wasn't that. <laughs> two years ago, we had a Halloween party and Glenn played acoustically. And I wanted to dress up as something that nobody would think it was me. And I spent the whole night as a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. Oh, and I, I came backstage. And, and I came backstage and I'm going course, to Glenn. Yeah. I'm like, hi, hi. And he's like, yeah, and then I wouldn't take off my mask. It was like, hi, hi, and everybody was like giving me a hard time. And then I took the mask off, and it still gave me a hard time. I didn't really figure that out. Yeah. But <laughs> so, but you're not playing this Halloween. So. No, well, you know what we normally do. We either did like you know those blue sets at your place, um, or um, like last year we did Irvine. This year we're just hanging out. We've been on the road too long. We just wanted to relax, um, you know, and kick back. Now the one thing about about your shows is you've got a real strong fan base. I mean, you see, on this show, we've traveled everywhere almost in the world, and we always see Danzig t-shirts everywhere. And as evident, when we played in Germany last year, there were tons of people there. I mean, are you going to be going out on the road at any time? Are you going to wait till you do a new record now? Or? Yeah, we're going to wait till, uh, till the summer, because, uh, like I said, we're fried. We've been on the road pretty much for like yeah, a year Yeah, tell me the half. places that you just got back from. Uh, we just come back from the Pacific. We did New Zealand, Australia. Japan, Hawaii, and before that we went and did all of America and Canada again. I mean, you know, and then we even went to Europe for two weeks or whatever. Again, are, it's are like... the Danzig fans in, let's say, New Zealand or Japan much different than the Danzig fans? Like, we ran... In America and Germany, it seemed like they were pretty much the same kind, you know, maybe just a little... Uh, they were pretty crazy in New Zealand, I have to say that, and Tokyo was... You know, I was. You hear all you think all the I was expecting, yeah, I was everything. expecting the kids to just be sitting there, uh, and you know, at the end of the song, clapping. And Tokyo was wild. Really? Yeah, it was pretty violent too. And so was um, New Zealand. Was great. Uh huh. New Zealand was yeah. Very cool. Well, right now we're gonna be playing a video from uh, Glenn. Why don't you tell us the video we're playing? What are we playing? It's coming down. No, we're this not. This is a video <laughs> where they <laughs> stitch up a guy's <laughs> mouth, and then this guy takes. Oh, we a, couldn't play it, that one. I can't and understand nail, why. Instead, and they bang it in. We're gonna play. If somebody wants to see that video, how can they see it? Uh, Put it this way. It call makes the American gym. and bug them. Put it this way. The the, the <laughs> video for it's coming down. It makes the Jim Rose sideshow look like Disney. Did yes, you see exactly. the MPT people that, you know, walk on a leash? Some of they those have these things, chrome in the things video. on their elbows and knees. There's and so much like stuff dogs. we can't even talk about it. Here's yeah. her black wings. Nobody's seen this for a hundred years.